building. And today we will be installing our Gen 1 flex fuel kit on my very own Chevy Sonic. Uh, we're gonna do a little tutorial today to show everybody uh, how to do it in depth and whatnot. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Let's bring some engagement. It'll help us figure out what uh, you know we should do next and whatnot, good, that, and the other. Thank you, everybody. Let's get in it. All right, so first up, you're gonna disconnect your uh, negative battery terminal. Should be a uh, 10 millimeter. Go ahead and screw, and screw that and just toss that over to the side. All right, so now we're going to uh, depressurize our fuel rail. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my LS7 kit. Just get this all up out of the way over here. Then you're gonna grab this black knob right here. And just unloose, boom. Put that up out of the way. All right, so now you're gonna depressurize the rail. I would put a rag down here to catch any gas that might spill. You take a screwdriver. And go ahead and push that in. There we go. All right, up next, you're going to remove this metal clip here. You could use a uh, flat head if necessary, or you just remove it with your fingers, just move that about the way. Now you're gonna take your fuel line disconnect tool, which is provided in your kit, and you're gonna go ahead and put it underneath. I don't know if you can see that there. Okay, let me use it. I'll go ahead and put a little rag down here, a little rag action. You're gonna push up, and down. All right, so get a little more clearance. I'm just gonna pop this hose off and just put it back there, right? Put our little rag here to catch any fuel. Put our fuel disconnect tool in and go ahead and pull up. Line will just come right off. Very important. You wanna make sure that whatever flex fuel kit you get, that your flex sensor is a genuine continental. The way you can tell is by these two raised tabs right here and the continental logo will be on it. Don't know if you can see it. There you go. Continental logo will be right on it right there. Anything else, anything else will cause uh, inaccurate readings and potentially damage your engine. So you're gonna take your uh, fuel line adapter and your flex fuel sensor. You're gonna go ahead and screw that. Fit that on. You're gonna screw that on right there. Go ahead and tighten that. Then you're gonna to wanna to take a uh, 16 millimeter wrench and go ahead and tighten it. So make sure that when you put on your sensor, it is facing the driver's side of the, of the vehicle. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the exact same thing over here with the fuel rail. So let's go and get this bad boy off. So let's slide right on. Take our wrench. Nice and tight. Next up, you're gonna take your fuel line, make sure you got your rag, and spill out any extra gas that's in there. 
and this is gonna go and click right on right onto the flex fuel sensor. Next, you're gonna take your wiring harness. You're gonna go ahead and click it into your flex fuel sensor. I just pushed it on back so it sits nice and flat. Just gonna click it on and lock it. And now we're gonna run our, we're gonna run our wires. All right, so these two, the white and the black are gonna run to your ECM, and the red one is gonna run to your fuse box. So let's go ahead and uh, let's pin all this, and then we'll kind of tuck our wires away. Now we're gonna disconnect the gray connection off of the ECM, which is J3, and you'll be able to tell because this one is gray, this one is black, and this one is blue. On a Gen 1, the orientation of the ECM will be sideways, uh, actually this way, so it will be the one to the top. So on your Sonic, it's gonna be the one that's uh, to the back, pointing towards the uh, back of the, the vehicle. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and push that clip up and push in. That's gonna go up, that's gonna move it off and then it's gonna pull it right off. Now you're gonna unclip this clip right there it's one on each side. And then this top piece should come right off, exposing the back. Okay. Now you're gonna take a uh, small screwdriver and you're going to make sure you be very gentle with this. You're gonna wanna push up on that side. And then on the back, you're gonna be able to, oh, let me just get that a little more. There you go. Be able to remove the face. Okay, so now we're going to find a uh, pin, or we're gonna pin the ground to 20. So the first row here is one, the first row is 16. So then you're gonna go and it's gonna start over on the next row. So then 17, 18, 19, 20. It's gonna be four in on this second row. Yeah, make sure you look for the numbers and it'll show you here. That's number one going all the way down to 16. And then it goes, starts over with 17 on the next row going down to 28 and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and let's poke through on 20. Boom. Now we're gonna go in here. All right, so make sure you use a pick or anything uh, small enough to push all the way through. So I'm gonna take your ground, the black wire, and go ahead and press it in. So it only goes in one way, so it literally won't fit if you're putting it in the wrong way. And now we're gonna connect our white wire and that's gonna go into slot 34, which is the second one, third in. Okay, here we go. So you're gonna wanna make sure, push that all the way through. Make sure that you catch the tab because if that tab is still stuck in there, then your wire is not gonna go all the way through. Then you're gonna take your wire, look over, so it's gonna be right here. So make sure that the orientation is right. So 
So just gonna push it in, just feed it on in. Yep, there we go. And you'll hear it click. Once it clicks into place, you're good to go. So now we're gonna put the cover back on the back. So push the wires down. And just clip it. Now we're gonna take the face and clip that right back on. Now, it's time to put it back in place. So you push it on, bring the lever down, and then push down and you clipped it. Good to go. Now we're gonna add our power. So we're gonna take our red wire, and our jumper. Take your wire strippers. Go ahead and strip it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Go ahead and put them in. And crimp it. And now we're going to go and plug it into our fuse box. So now we're going to look for the flex fuel fuse here. And uh, so on the Sonic, originally they were supposed to come uh, flex fuel capable, but they ended up not doing that. But there is a slot for it. So we're going to look for that. It's So it's right here. So we're gonna remove it. We're gonna use our uh, tool, which comes in your fuse box. Go ahead and take that out. All right, so now we're gonna take our uh, add a fuse. Gonna plug that in. Then, pull down, run your wire out this back corner right here in this opening. Gonna put it on and click. There you go, nice and secure. All right, so on a Gen 1 Cruise, it would, uh, to add the uh, fuse jumper, you would locate a hole on the side of the uh, case, and you would feed your wire in, and then once you feed your wire in, then you would crimp it onto the add a fuse. And then um, on a Gen 1 also, there isn't a specified flex fuel slot, so you just follow the directions for that and um, for any other vehicle, standalone vehicle, like a Vanderhall or whatnot, you would uh, basically just need any 12 volt um, power source to, to run it. You could hook it up to your battery if you'd want. All right, once you get everything all plugged in and nice and ready to go, then you're gonna use your um, supplied zip ties and just kind of clean up your wiring, kind of run it how you would want. Just kind of get these up out of the way right here.
Nice. All right, now we'll put our cap back on our fuel rail. Make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Kind of tidy up. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my LS7 kit back. There we go. Once we make sure everything's nice and tidied up here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook our battery back up. Put that on. Nice and tight. Once everything's tidied up, go ahead and turn the car on and make sure that there's no leaks. So now that we've wrapped up the install, no leaks, everything's plugged in perfectly fine. And uh, until we uh, receive our tune to uh, enable the flex fuel sensor, we can continue to still drive the car like normal, as long as you use the same fuel that you were tuned for previously. So until you receive your tune update, just keep rocking like it's like a normal day. Thank you very much. Peace.